Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Andy Moore. I'm chairman of the Town of Penfield Transportation Committee. Uh, this is a resident-led committee, volunteer committee here in the Town of Penfield. Joining me are committee members Mary Sweeney, Lori Enos, Captain Alberti from the Monroe County Sheriff's Office, and also Jason Ebbs, one of our resident committee members. Also here uh, in the audience is town staff, Sarah Waterman, Mark Valentine, Linda Cummings, and Eric Tate. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we'll go ahead and I'll call, or, call, or, call to order the meeting for today. And uh, agenda item number two, approval of minutes, the minutes on May 20th, 2021. Uh, are there any questions or comments from any of the committee members on these minutes? Okay, not hearing anybody. Can I get a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve them. Okay. I'll Lor second. Thank you. Uh, approved by Lori, second by Mary. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I'd just like to say kudos to, to Linda for putting those together. We had some extensive yeah, I, I was back and forth conversation. Of, so this was a lot of minutes. So quite a minute this, this detailed, past uh, so month. You always do such a fabulous job. Yep. Very true, thank you for your, for your help, Linda. Uh, moving on with agenda item number three, committee discussion. Looks like the first one we have is a Jackson Road pedestrian crosswalk concern. Mark or Sarah? I can. This one came into you on this sure. one, I think. Or? So um, we had an email come in, I think in the last two weeks, about the intersection of Springside Lane and Jackson Road. There is a crosswalk that goes across Jackson Road connecting the sidewalks. There was concerns of people driving through the crosswalk when, people, when pedestrians were waiting to cross and speeds in that area. Um, since that email came in, the county actually striped the ladder pattern on the crosswalk. So you can see on the screen it's just two lines that now has the crossbars for the ladder. Um, it does have the proper signage. We did go out and check okay. for a head crosswalk ahead signs as well, well as the crosswalk signs that point to the crosswalk. Um, and the resident was just concerned about pedestrians safety. Yeah, I mean, certainly I can, I can uh, understand that concern. Newberry Park has a lot of children that cross over and having um, the town hall facilities and recreation fields and Penfield Little League, it, it, you know, it does get a fair amount of traffic. Um, forgive me for asking, because I know this gets kind of confusing with Jackson Road. Is this portion a county road portion or a town road portion? This portion is a county road portion. Okay. They actually didn't notify us that they were doing the stri restriping. Okay. So we're happy they did. Um, okay. yeah. mm -hmm. So because it's a county road, um, does that mean we can't do anything on there without their permission? I mean, it's their road. I mean, we can have a conversation okay. with um, them about if there's other things that so need or want to be done. On Scribner, where near where Mary and I live, I know it's because there's a school there, a um, the plank road, um, a Bay Trails, that, that, that school down there, where they removed the crossing guard, they put the sidewalk in with the flashing lights that if you are crossing, you can push a button and it's all solar powered mm -hmm. and the lights just flash to make people aware that there's a crosswalk. Yeah. And I mean, you'd have to be blind to not see in the morning, all the kids and their moms and the strollers mm -hmm. and the bikes mm -hmm. and stuff. But I see runners using that to cross the street safely. Sure. Is that only for school district or could we put something in there because it is adjacent to? And that's something we can we can talk with the county about and see it's their road. So they would have to, you know, OK it. But um, that's a similar uh, setup that um, I think we've talked in the past at, at Baird Road. We've got two locations. I think it's scheduled for August now that they're supposed to come in and put in those those ped uh, buttons at where it comes out right across from the community center. And mm -hmm. then they've kind of got where the the goat trail is where the, the students yeah. cross up above two spots there and then as well as um, at the end of Liberty Street so it's not near right. a school down in the four corners so at the end of Liberty and five mile and then south on on five mile down by the Bray Buff apartments there's another crossing south of 441 so um, that's something we got a grant with the county you know, it's three or four years ago now it's been a, a while um, those are finally going to be implemented this summer so you know the county may want to see how those go or those you know that 
Okay. That's the just process is, but that's something you know, I think this committee can be as, as a recommendation. Um, as, as Sarah shared, I think it was you know, great to see the county stripe that and use the new you know, piano key letter uh, set up. I think that brings more high visibility to it. Um, there are signs, the sign ahead signs that are there, um, but I think that would be the next step is to look at you know, whether we went with a, a pet indicator and you know, I think be in the proximity to the town, the park. Um, we obviously get a lot of people coming out of that neighborhood or down Jackson and then over, right. um, you know. So can I ask what, what uh, Sarah or Mark, what next steps or what are you recommending? Obviously, um, from what I'm reading, a supervisor of a fountain, I think reached out to the Monroe County Sheriff's Office and just asked for some additional monitoring of that area. Um, and then Sarah, as you said, looks like the county put down some type of crossing area for that. So um, what what are you recommending to the committee as far as next steps? I mean, I think reaching out to the Monroe County DOT, you know, if this committee was supportive of it, uh, since we just got it in, um, we hadn't yet taken that step. But I think if this group is supportive of looking at, you know, some alternative options, uh, reach out to the count, uh, the state, excuse me, the county DOT, um, you know, see what they'd be looking for if they want some additional traffic counts, if they want, okay. You know some pedestrian counts if they want you know some additional information before they you know look to take a next step but we can reach out to them and see what their when was the their last thoughts time and the feedback trailer, speed trailer was out on that section of the road because that's one of their other concerns was the speeding on there yeah. um i don't have that information um i've had it up and down jackson road but in that location it's probably been a while yeah um I know it's probably booked for the summer as it usually is, but if there's a chance, maybe just throw yeah, that out I mean, there. Just yep, it I shows the resident that. that we're taking their concerns seriously. Yeah, 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 absolutely. All right, great. Yeah, I think that would would definitely help raise awareness of um, speeding. I hear it all the time from residents that I talk to when that cart's out there. It definitely makes them think about it a little bit more, especially if they're traveling that area consistently day after day. They kind of become numb to it a little bit as far as speed limits go so I mean and it's it's certainly great that the county striped it um, with that said we will actually be doing some work on um, that portion of Jackson for the county DOT this summer um, actually doing a I believe a micro pave project over that so that will actually paint more or less paint the road black again um, and you know that new striping will be um, you know They'll, they'll restripe the road yet again, so that striping will actually stand out uh, quite a bit further yeah. um, and, and more than it already does. Okay, great. Good great. to know. Thank you. All right, so um, with those recommendations, I guess I'll ask the committee, is uh, the steps forward being proposed okay with all the committee members? Jason, I see you shaking your head yes. Yes, yep. for me too. Everybody yes, good? Yep. Okay. Uh, all right. Hello, Anybody? Scott Alberti with the sheriffs. All right. Thank, you? thank you. Appreciate it. Um, all right. Hi, so, this is the Hello. Yep. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yep. It's the sheriff's office. I know you talked about a speed trailer, and someone said it might be booked up. We have one available to us. We have one that uh, collects data. So if that's something you need deployed, feel free to email me. If yours is tied up, and and we could deploy it. Uh, to, to collect some data for you. I, I just don't know what the duration is. Usually our duration, we try not to go more than a week in one location. So I don't know if you need more than a week or no. if that does it for you. That's no, that, that would certainly be sufficient. That's yeah. about all we put ours out for as well, uh, just because it does run off, ours at least runs off a battery and the batteries don't last much longer than the, you know that time frame. Okay. Captain, okay, thank so I'd ask if someone could email me that request. I'm kind of in a, an environment where I can't take those notes right now, and, and we'll set it up and let you know. All right. Thank you, Captain. Greatly appreciate uh, your support and helping out with this. All right. Any of those opposed to the next steps moving forward? Hearing none, okay. Uh, recommendations are accepted. Thank you, staff. Moving on to number two, Jackson Road speeding concerns, speed hump request and signage. So did receive a request from a resident um, on the road and, and uh, pass that email on to the, the committee. He had a couple of different thoughts on it. Um, we had done counts 
uh, I think a year or two ago, uh, just to kind of be ahead of, there's a new development, uh, Stafford Park. Um, and then in the last uh, week, just leading up to this meeting to get some fresh data, uh, Sarah um, and Mike from our engineering department went out, uh, put the counters down, and Sarah can kind of run through the, those counts. Sorry, I'm just pulling them up. Keep talking for a minute. Nope, you can. you're good. <laughs> so we placed them at two locations on Jackson Road, and I'm pulling the map down so I can point those out to you. One was about here, and that's just to get the, the people going to the upper portion of Jackson or all the way through, and then one at the lower portion of Jackson, approximately here. The southern one, this one, received um, an ADT of 835 cars, which is the average daily traffic, um, with an 85th percentile of 83 miles per hour. This is a, th I'm sorry, I'm oh, doing so that wrong. <laughs> a 33 <laughs> miles per hour, um, and it is a 35 mile per hour road. Mm -hmm. okay. The northern section, again, approximately here, received an ADT of 516, so 516 with an average daily traffic, sorry, with an 85th percentile of 35. So, which is the speed limit. Which is the speed limit. Um, the resident that did contact us requested a reduction of the speed limit to 25 or 30 miles per hour um, based on him seeing other streets around town and was concerned that it's a through traffic road so is requesting the potential of a sign for no through traffic. Um, it being so publicly a dedicated publicly road. Publicly dedicated road, road that's right. not really something we would do. You can't do that. I'm like, I can't drive on that road? Are you kidding me? Yeah. And right now, I think, because that's the way we came, because I'm avoiding the intersection at Five Mile and Atlantic to get here, Plank Road to Jackson. No, I just gave yeah. away my secrets, right? <laughs> um, is my shortcut yeah. to avoid the backup at rush hour to get here, right? So there is more traffic on Jackson, obviously, because of people. Um, well, and this like, is the lower portion of Jackson that's almost to Wayland. So Jackson Road that the town hall is on goes straight into Jackson Extension, okay. and then the old portion of Jackson Road is his Oh, big so that's concern. what they're talking about, is the old. Yep. Okay, yep. all right. Um, but he also requested some kind of speed control, whether it's a stop sign at Timbrook. Um, I think he might have meant Thorn Tree. I think he meant Thorn Tree, or um, speed humps as an option. As we've previously discussed, speed humps wouldn't be um, reasonable on that type of road, and we don't we don't um, prefer them in Penfield at this point. We are still working in the engineering department for a policy on that, a formal policy, um, but do not have one written out yet. Um, as for a um, stop sign at Thorn Tree, it would be a mid-block stop sign, so it wouldn't, it would be less safe to have a stop sign like that. Right, because you know how many people would just blow right through it. Because people expect people, yeah. somebody to stop, so you have to cross, and, and stop signs are not meant for speed control devices to stop people, and you think, well, it'll slow them down up to it, and then after, I mean, that's, stop signs are meant obviously for intersections, not for a, right, speed, control. a, a speed right. con control of that. Yeah. I mean, I think the windy nature of the road, you know, has the appearance people are going faster. Um, I know Councilman Moore, we've been talking back and forth for a long time about um, whether the potential for sidewalks in that neighborhood, I think that would help. Um, oh, we've there are kind of, no sidewalks on that? There's not the sidewalks road. currently. Um, we've kind of put that back on the neighbors. Some of them expressed interest in it, um, and as the town board has done, uh, recently has entertained uh, petitions for that. So we've kind of tasked those neighbors to go back and say, okay, get your neighbors to sign, but also identify which side of the street you want the sidewalks on. That's always the most difficult part for us. Everybody wants sidewalks, but they want them on the other side of the road. I'll happily walk across the road and walk on them in your front yard, but I don't want them on my side. So um, surprisingly, that's that's a Seriously? lot of our, our, typically the hardest oh, yeah. part of getting sidewalks is oh, determining yeah. which side oh, yeah. of the road they go on. Um, we may need easements. We may need, you know, obviously some trees mean to come down, you know, putting the sidewalks in. There's some you know, impediments to that. So I know those neighbors are looking at that, but I think that would be a, a benefit to that neighborhood. Um, Stafford Park developments going in, they did receive a sidewalk waiver from the town board, 
but that means they put the money into a, uh, a fund. So instead of putting sidewalks within their development, they're putting money into a fund. The town board has dedicated that, you know, fund going towards sidewalks. I think, you know, while the, that's not going to change the speed on the road, I think no. getting walkers off the road or kids and stuff and onto a sidewalk, I think, you know, maybe a better long-term solution on it does, making it a little safer. It does through help there. slow people down when you see a mom pushing a, a, a stroller or a kid with a bike you know riding a little kid you just you just slow down because you never know when they're going to go flunk into the road yeah. so yeah it just makes sense to have the sidewalks so yeah yeah, yeah so and, and, and you know I, I lived on i lived in this area of, of jackson road for 12 years and and certainly um this resident uh, raises some you know some some good points just from living there i mean jackson road like panorama trail is a very narrow road and um, it, you know, people use it between Whalen and Jackson Road, Jackson Extension versus going all the way up to Jackson Extension, cutting across. So it, it does get a fair amount of traffic. And you know, living on that road for for 12 years, you know, people drive 25 miles an hour, and then you get, you know, the person driving 40, 50 miles an hour that just feel like you know they're going to fly through and do the little curve. You know, and things like that, and then there's a little straightaway. So it, it does draw, you know, the 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 potential for drivers to speed up. I'm glad to see that the that the two uh, marker points that we have and and the data shows that for the most part, you know, people are within what the speed limit is for that particular road. But as Mark said, you know, we're definitely looking at sidewalks in that area. Um, you know, the town's been pretty consistent in letting the residents drive that process on the road with a petition versus the town just coming in and mandating that you're going to get sidewalks and this is where it's going to go, at least from my perspective, that's not what the town wants to do. So citizens are encouraged and welcome to drive that process and, and it needs to be um, embraced by, you know, the neighborhood and those that live on that street. And we've got plenty of examples of where that has happened. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, but certainly, um, I think, you know, going back to your point, Sarah, with, with the speed humps, and, and we talk about this from, from time to time, but, you know, speed humps are difficult. I know they're on Huntington Meadow, and they've been there for 20-plus years now, probably, but if this town started the process of adding speed humps to roads when we get requests, I think every road in the town of Penfield would have speed humps mm -hmm. on them as of today. And then you're gonna get the complete opposite where now people are gonna come in saying, you need to remove the speed humps. And then you're gonna get half the residents that want them, half the residents that don't want them. Um, and it just, it doesn't stop the process. It doesn't stop the issue, so we have to look at other options available, um, you know, and, and I think that this committee and certainly, you know, the town's prepared to do that. So, um, unfortunately, I, I, you know, speed humps is, to me, is just not a, an option, or you, you open that door and then every single road in this town will have speed humps on them. Um, so I think that, you know, there may be some, some awareness we can do. Certainly the, the speed carts, um, whether it's the towns or the sheriff's department, Captain Alberti was very gracious in, in offering his. Um, I think that's a, a good start. Um, you know, and I think we can, you know, we can kind of go from there and maybe keep monitoring what the, what the speeds are um, in this particular neighborhood on this particular street. I think but it it, it's difficult. There's no, there's no question about it that Jackson Road, this portion of Jackson Road um, is, you know, is an is a interesting road being so narrow and uh, having some, um, some curves to it that kind of people find fun to speed around and make those, you know, sharp turns on those curves which uh, is unfortunate. I think it would be beneficial to request enforcement because speeding is a concern and there are outliers in the, the data that shows speeding is a concern. So I could potentially go through that and look at times and provide that to, to um, Sheriff Alberti. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I, I would recommend with the enforcement um, that maybe right where the, the new development is being um, built there um, could be a good spot for them to do, because as, as people kind of head, I guess that would be north on Whalen, they zip around you know, that corner and they start to speed up, and if the sheriff's deputy is right there, that's gonna make them stop, and then coming the other way. <clears throat> there's another turn as you're kind of heading south, you, you kind of veer to the right on Jackson Road, and uh, the sheriff's car right there, could, that could be a good spot for them to, to uh, enforce the speed limit. Uh, moving forward. So um, I think that that's a good start moving forward. Uh, a little extra enforcement with the Monroe County Sheriff's Office and then maybe getting some kind of a speed cart out there just to help with the uh, education um, and reinforce what the speed limit is and maybe get people to, to respect the fact if they're going faster than 35, they need to, to lower that. And similar things that we've done on Panorama Trail which is the first example that I think of when I, when I think of a real narrow road in a mature neighborhood. Jackson Road, and this area of Jackson Road and Panorama Trail kind of are the same in many ways. Yeah, and that's one we had targeted years ago for uh, sidewalks and slowly yep. kind of worked our way up. And I think, you know, there's many residents I talked to on the road that didn't think they were necessary. No one would ever walk on Panorama Trail. It's too twisty turny. And then right after we put yeah. the sidewalks in, people were amazed of how many families and kids and people, once it was safe, you know, yep. traverse the road and you can always see somebody walking up and down the road or a mom yep. in a stroller, as you had said, yep. or whatever. So I think, you know, once they were in, I think the residents saw the benefit to the sidewalks and, you know, it gave people a, a safe place to walk and safe place to run. I see people running, safe place to run. Right. And, yep. you know, yep. that's uh, so similarly, that was a kind of a, a twisty, skinnier road, you know, with, you know, that one has got a little bit of grade to it, but I think the sidewalks, you know, have been a great benefit to. That probably was the, the most challenging, more challenging than Jackson with all the, you know, the, the ravines. Sure. So which side do you go on? The one without it, the ravines, yeah. right? <laughs> to, it took us a number of years. I mean, that and cost. I mean, there's a lot of road and going up and working with slopes and stuff. You know, we kind of did that one in chunks, and you know, I think you know Jackson Road, uh, Jackson. Um, you know, would be similar. I don't know as whether we could do it all in one year, but I think if you can take it, you know, in subsequent years and at least, you know, kind of take a little bit at a time. I never realized how expensive sidewalks were until my, um, my condo. I'm on the I'm the VP of the board, and we're replacing some sidewalks behind a garage to, to tenants' places. It's like thirty thousand dollars. It's yeah. like cha ching, yeah. and this is just you know. So I'm thinking. It adds so up I fast. It. It's, yeah, it, it, it goes fast for just a few feet of sidewalk. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that and that's just for the sidewalk. That's not right. tree removal or right. utility and this is just issues. Replacing the sidewalk. Yeah. yeah, we're not doing yeah. anything other than taking out and putting in new. So I can only imagine. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think sidewalks will be on Jackson Road um, in the near future. I'm I'm optimistic and certainly supportive of that. Um, but as I said before, you know, it really should be a resident-led initiative, and we've got plenty of examples of those throughout the town. And so, um, hopefully. You know, somebody will take that charge, whether on Thorn Tree, Jackson Road, or Squire, and um, go and get a uh, petition with neighbors and move forward. So, all right, so that's what I, I am proposing um, as next steps on this particular request, uh, some, some um, increased enforcement. If we can, maybe getting the sheriff's speed cart or our speed cart out there and just kind of uh, reminding people what the speed limit is and that they need to slow down. Um, so with that, that's what uh, I propose moving forward, uh, if, uh, if the committee's okay with that. It works for me. Okay. Uh, that yeah. sounds good to me. Jason uh, and uh, uh, Captain Alberti? Yep. Okay. Agreed. All right. Uh, anybody opposed or anybody have any additional um, suggestions from the committee? All right, so that passes, and we'll go ahead and start those next steps moving forward with this request. All right, uh, agen agenda item number four, other business. We have a letter that came in uh, to the committee from a Penfield resident, Kevin Gallagher, um, on some intersection enforcement requests. Uh, he is asked that the letter be read, um, which I will gladly do. 
um, here. So I will go ahead and read the letter for the, for the record, and then obviously the hard copy will be a part of the record too. So let me go ahead and uh, read this. As a member of this community, I have witnessed unsafe and unlawful driving behavior. In accordance with the existing procedures, I am presenting my concerns to the Transportation Committee for proper consideration as agenda items. I will start with the following five safety issues. All five of these issues have a common road component. One, driving behavior on Dublin Road is unsafe. There were three crashes within 14 months. Speeding is a primary concern and is a problem. The town of Penfield has been aware of this issue for 15 years, but has not taken appropriate or effective action. The data collected over the years has been consistent, so, new data is, so no new data is necessary. Please propose an effective solution or solutions, plural. Additionally, uh, two, drivers frequently run the stop sign on Dublin Road to Penfield Road 441. Three and four drivers frequently run the stop sign from both ends of Helmsford Way, north end and south end to Dublin Road. Five, drivers frequently run the stop sign from Dublin Road to Sweets Corner Road. These are neighborhood issues and a community-wide issue as well as uh, location-specific issues. The following eight issues are not properly addressed at the last meeting. They were glossed over and specific descriptions were admitted. Do not paraphrase. Each issue needs to be addressed, I'm sorry, each issue needs to be added to the Transportation Committee agenda for the next meeting for proper review and committee action. I have restated them below. A, on Watson Road, there are too many crashes, three crashes in six months, too many unsafe drivers. The driving behavior is aggressive and can, easily, and can be easily observed, especially speeding. This is a location-specific issue and a community-wide issue. B, on Sweets Corner Road, there are too many crashes on Harris Road and Salt Road and too many unsafe drivers. The driving behavior is aggressive and can be easily observed, especially speeding. This is a location-specific issue and a community-wide issue. C, at the intersection of 441 and Route 250, drivers frequently fail to yield to the turn left after a green arrow. Also, drivers frequently run the red while turning right. These actions especially threaten pedestrians and bicyclists, but not motorists, too. This is a location-specific issue and a community-wide issue. D, drivers turning left on Whalen Road to Atlantic Avenue frequently cross one or two sets of double yellow lines and get to the dedicated left turn lane. This is a location-specific issue and a community-wide issue. E, drivers frequently run stop signs on Whalen Road at Dublin. This is a location-specific issue and a community-wide issue. F, drivers frequently run stop sign, st I'm sorry, drivers frequently run the stop sign from Peachtree Drive at Penfield Road. This is a location-specific issue and a community-wide issue. G, drivers frequently run stop signs at Jackson Road Extension and Whalen Road. This is a specific issue and a community-wide issue. H, Drivers frequently run the stop signs at the intersection of Baird Road and Whalen Road despite the flashing warning lights. This, is, this location is specific issue and a community-wide issue. Kevin Gallagher, Penfield. All right, so that's submitted um, as a letter to the committee. Mm -hmm. And um, I will open it up for any questions. I think that this is going to take some time to look into it. Um, certainly, I think that the, uh, Mr. Gallagher has identified a lot of driver-related issues, right. which is, again, is unfortunate. I think we can all agree that that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. not, uh, not quite sure what we as a committee or town can do on driver-related issues. Um, just being honest with that. but. Uh, you know, I, I think we can always take a look and see what possibly could be done mm -hmm. to help. But uh, I think the constant theme throughout this letter is driver-specific actions, mm -hmm. not necessarily um, design or 
um, anything pertaining to what the town would be responsible for. I mean, we're all responsible for our own actions in vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy Moore can't sit here and dictate what somebody can or cannot do as a driver or what their behaviors are as a driver. It's unfortunate that these happen, but I'm sure this type of activity happens in every town throughout the United States of America, not just here in Penfield. So. Um, we'll take a look at some of these um, recommendations and observations, and we'll get back to the applicant with a correspondence. <clears throat> so, so I open it up for any other comments. Andy, he I, uses the word frequently throughout his letter, and I just wonder how we uh, equate what he means as far as time element or whatever. How many, does he mean every day or... I just wasn't, he used frequently a lot in yep. there, and I wasn't sure what that means. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what it means either. He didn't detail out that specific um, comment or what his definition of frequently is, so I, I guess that's up to, um, you know, uh, my, my reading of that could be different than yours, right. could be different from Lori's, mm -hmm. could be different from somebody else's. So we'll just have to take them at what he provided. Okay. Frequently is kind of a vague term, and, and we'll consider it accordingly. So I, I would agree that frequently is, is a vague term. I mean, I would expect that you're, at some point someone's going to run a stoplight or a stop mm -hmm. sign, you know, but what do you judge that against? What's your, what's your criteria? What, what is your expected value for that to happen? Um, so, you know, without having that information, that it's difficult to say, you know, what he might think is, is frequent might not be actually frequent to someone else, so. Yeah, and certainly we can um, provide this correspondence to the sheriff's office. I know mm -hmm. Captain um, Alberti is very active and diligent in um, responding to our request, and we thank him for that partnership. Um, but as you pointed out, Mary, and, and as I read, you know, a lot of his drivers frequently, right. drivers frequently, drivers frequently, mm -hmm. um, drivers turning, so forth. And, uh, you know, uh, none of us can control what somebody else does behind the steering wheel of a car. Okay. So um, we'll do our best to address this and certainly uh, let the Monroe County Sheriff's Office know of some of these concerns with drivers' behaviors and address it accordingly. Andy, I can say I, I have had quite a bit of uh, correspondence back and forth uh, with Kevin regarding this uh, when he originally sent the first uh, eight um, kind of locations and intersections in uh, with concerns and, and brought it up to the committee um, at the last meeting. With that said, um, I did respond back to Kevin and informed him that all but the intersection of Dublin and Whalen were either county or New York State DOT controlled intersections mm -hmm. uh, that you know Whalen and Dublin was the only town intersection and all of the items that he brought up and his concerns were enforcement related you know with that said that I would you know be willing to pass them on to the Monroe County uh, Department of Transportation the New York State Department of Transportation and the Monroe County Sheriff's Office However, he declined and did not want that shared uh, with any of the departments other than if any committee members happened to also work for one of those departments at the time. Okay. Um, I told him, you know, with that said, if I can't share it with the, you know, with the, you know, the jurisdictions uh, that, you know, own and maintain those intersections, that likely there's not much that can or will be done. Um, he then... You know, I know responded back, uh, concerned that they weren't addressed. Uh, but again, I explained to him that we are a recommendary, you know, body to the town board uh, for actions on, you know, town roads, and we certainly pass things on to the New York State DOT, the Monroe County DOT, and to the sheriff's office for enforcement. Yep. Um, but if if I'm not able to, if he doesn't yep. want that shared, again, not much that we can do. That no member of the transportation committee is legally able to sit on the side of the road, right. wait for someone to violate, you know, vehicle and traffic law, then pull them over and issue tickets. Uh, it just, that, that's not how it works. Oh, that would be fun um, if we could, though. <laughs> you know, I, I know, you know, he, he wants something addressed, but again, I think these fall more under enforcement. 
Um, I know he did send a, uh, I think even yesterday, um, did send a letter to the uh, Munner County Sheriff's Office to, to Zone A um, to the captain uh, with some concerns and, and locations, um, as I did indicate that, you know, and suggested that he reach out to them directly. So glad to see he's doing that, and right. hopefully that, that helps with some of the enforcement as it's not something that we have the ability to do. Yeah. Eric, no, those are great points, Eric. Thank you for mentioning yeah. that. Sure. Um, based on that correspondence yesterday, he did discuss that if we feel it's appropriate to pass that one on to the other offices, it may be reasonable to at least reach out to Kevin requesting to pass this on because that really is the limit of what we can do yeah. mm -hmm. at yeah. this time. And maybe the Monroe County DOT or New York State DOT can reevaluate the intersections and look into them. Yeah. At the very least, that would be more with those, those intersections than we can do. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, just, I would just like to say, um, I read Eric's re um, response to, to, to Mr. Gallagher, and mm -hmm. it was extremely thought, well thought out, professional, and succinct. So you did a great job, so thank you. Yeah, no, I think that the, those are all good comments. And, you know, if, if Mr. Gallagher would like us to reach out to those entities, as, as you said, Eric, then I would uh, encourage and welcome him to authorize that to happen. But since uh, he has asked you, as of today, has asked you not to do that, um, then we'll take him at his word. And if we get an email tomorrow or something that says, please pass it on to... Um, those different entities, Monroe County DOT, uh, New York State DOT, then we'll be happy to do that. Um, but certainly I think that um, making the Sheriff's Office aware of this um, for any enforcement um, efforts that they can do, and I realize that they have enforcement efforts on every road in the town of Penfield and other towns um, throughout Monroe County. So um, they, they do their best with the resources that they have. So with that, that's what I propose as uh, next steps. And uh, if the committee is okay with that, um, we'll go ahead and move forward. Is, is everybody that's, okay? That's fine with that me, yes. Okay. yes. Is there anybody opposed or any additional comments from committee members? Nope. Okay. The other so thing we'll I would, I would add that. is just if, if and when we get into evaluating these intersections, We'll be at evaluating it based on the uh, manual of urban traffic control devices, the state federal highway law. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we live right. by in New York State. That's what we look at for intersection, sight distance, signage, um, clear Not zone, vision, it be vision and everything way. else. Exactly. That's what yeah. we'll be evaluating it for is following the national federal highway standard and the manual of urban traffic well, control devices. Well, and those devices. are, how do I want to say that? Those are industry-wide accepted criteria and requirements, right? Yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, moving on with our agenda, item number five, held items. Anything? Hearing nothing, moving on to new business, agenda item number six. I have an item. Yes. Um, this week we received an email from a resident near Baird Road and the community center. There are two crosswalks over there that Mark actually briefly brought up and she was concerned that they're not being followed so pedestrian safety is a concern okay. and um, I did correspond with her after that and mentioned to her that they're actually we actually put in for grants to improve those sidewalks with Monroe County DOT and we're expecting Monroe County DOT to be upgrading those crosswalks in August, September time this year. Great. Um, they will be receiving flashing pedestrian signs mm -hmm. with the buttons, as well as ladder crossing, which is it, the rungs essentially would be added. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, she was very happy to hear that um, and, and kind of happy that we've already start, move, started moving forward on that. Great, so you, you have kind of closed the loop with her on the, the next steps? Yep. Perfect, thank you very much for doing that. The, and I can say I uh, specifically drove through that location uh, earlier today. The crosswalks have been striped with the ladder already. Okay. Um, it's just the, the actual flashing um, kind of 
indication warning signs uh, that still need to be installed. Uh, but the same, uh, the same striping ladder pattern that was used uh, just up here on Jackson Road across from um, Springside, Lane. Springside Lane. Thank you. Uh, is you know exactly what they did here. Um, you know, all part of the. It's part of their greater. There was a minimum dollar amount threshold uh, to apply for the pedestrian safety action plan grant. Okay. Um, I believe it was you know at least twenty five thousand dollars. Certainly, a single crosswalk, uh, while it, it does come at an expense, doesn't necessarily you know isn't in excess of twenty five thousand. Uh, so the county uh, DOT actually coordinated with all of the towns that had any interested uh, locations to do one big grant and compile everything and they took lead on it so that they were well above that threshold, okay. uh, above the minimum threshold to be able to guarantee that they would get it. Um, and they're the ones uh, that part of why they're coordinating them both on uh, county and town roads. Okay, well, thank you. Appreciate you um, making that happen. So that mm -hmm. sounds good. All right, Sarah, thank you very much for doing that. We'll go to agenda item number seven, public participation. Anybody for that? I'm not seeing anybody signed up. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, conclude the transportation meeting for today. The next meeting will be held on September 16th, 2021. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you committee members for being here on this gorgeous evening and thank you town staff for your help um, in working on behalf of Penfield residents. Please have a good night. Uh, have a healthy and safe week. Thank you.